I'm so scared to touch that. Insert clip of me touching this. Oh, it's not on. Are you okay? I nearly went myself! <laughs> We're missing the plant. I can't get it, I'm attached. <laughs> I'll just sit like this. So, I was thinking... Must have heard. How did the Wicked Witch of the West drink water if she was allergic to it and it made her melt? She must have been like, aguaphobic. Is that a thing? When you're allergic to water... I don't know. Agua... Christina Aguilera. <laughs> Christina Aguilera. Christina Aguilera. She sung hits such as water in a bottle. <laughs> Is it the Wicked Witch of the West? No, which was the one that died before? I don't know. Because it, then it, there's the east, same... East and West, North and South were nice. And Why are there so many witches? Which witch is which? Four. What about North West? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Kim Kardashian's oh, baby. <laughs> Tangents. <laughs> Not a I don't know, that was just a lot of air escaping my esophagus. So I went on the old Instagrammers. <laughs> what? I asked people on Instagram about their assumptions about Britain's Got Talent. And today we're going to debunk those. Yeah, debunk them. Yeah, rub those debunks all over our faces. Or confirm them. And that's what we're going to do. And then Jesus was like, oh, is it Moses? Right, so the video. <laughs> <laughs> We're just so bad. Do you know what a group of ferrets is called? A business of ferrets. <laughs> Hi guys, today we have a very important meeting. <laughs> Sheila, you didn't do that right. Get the accounts. I have a text. You need Monday.com. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get on with the video. The sun's gone in. <laughs> so the first assumption is anyone can enter, talented or not, says Eloise Forever. I have the talent of a potato. Yeah, anyone can enter it. You just go online and you sign up. Bish bash bosh, done. I entered because I did panto with Georges Samson. At the time, there was this thing called Star Scouts, and I asked him very politely if I could use his name to put myself forward. And then I did. And then it was two days and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. And then I panicked and then this happened. Next assumption. Um, oh, oh. This one's tea. It is a pathological, no, sorry. <laughs> Psychological nightmare. I have to agree. <laughs> lights on, lights off. I have to agree, I think. It is such a stressful journey. It's like this, up and down, up and down. And if you're not prepared for it, and you're just a punter from the street, it is very difficult to deal with. And then the next minute, you're back to work. It's very fake. It's very fake. I don't know, that's just fake. So my friend Hannah sent me her most used emoji, and it's the guy in the sauna. She was like, I've never used this emoji ever before. Because this is like sauna, oh, steam, it? tea, steam. I'm itchy. I'm itchy. It's what visco girls get. Ah, my glasses. I don't wear glasses. Okay, yeah. I don't have math. Next assumption. You're not told if you'll make it onto the program. Uh, until after the audition, love you, X. It's very weird. So you went for the audition, you did the audition, and you didn't know if you made it on until... You'll never, you never find out unless you, until you watch it on telly, and they tell you you're gonna be on telly this day. That's when you find out what you're gonna be on telly. And that's it. So you find out when everyone else... You find a week out, a week before. They ring you up and they go like, yep, so you're gonna be on this show. How long was the gap? Audition. The auditions were in January. Mm. The show went on in May. It was a week before the show went live, but it was also like, I can't remember when we found out. I think it was like March. Was it March? Was it May? No. Well. Uh, what? How? Sorry. Like, and then this guy, um, I don't know if I can say his name. 
he came over to my house because we were doing like pre visits literally there. He said to me, you've got to watch this weekend because there's a really funny bit with you. And that's all I can say. And I was like, oh, okay. Then I watched it and it was literally me running out of the room like a penguin with no knees. I remember sitting there on the sofa watching it and then just being like, oh my gosh, I'm on the semi-finals tomorrow. I'm panicking. And that's that. Next assumption. You had a lot of fun, Fiona Gamor. I did have a lot of fun. You it said was. That really aggressively, like you hated that question. Oh, let's say it again then. You had a lot of fun. Um. I don't think it was fun actually. I think it was stressful. I remember you being extremely stressed. Like, do you remember coming around to mine? You I remember really talking good. to you about it in the kitchen. Yeah. And I was very stressed. Oh, you were ridiculously stressed. I've never seen you like that before, including making swish swish. Oh, by the way, I found the picture of me in Burger King. <laughs> Where's this? After guy? swish swish. And I looked depressed. <laughs> I'll put the picture in here. You can see mental exhaustion. I'm wearing a Burger King crown as well. To make it even, it, I just look dishevelled. I think it's the pressure you put on yourself. You are your own worst critic. Like, Isn't everyone? Like the comment section of YouTube has got nothing on you. I think everyone does it. I think it's a natural thing to put a lot of pressure on yourself. You don't have to be exceptional in life. All that matters is that you're having fun. The more you know. Next assumption. BGT own your channel and TikTok. They don't. But. but there has been a video on YouTube that recently got a lot of views and it's someone, they have gone through the Britain's Got Talent contract and I had a lot of comments underneath being like, Britain's Got Talent own your content. How does it feel that knowing that Simon Cowell earns all your money? doesn't earn all my money. That 76 pence is mine. They don't, no, they don't own, they don't own my channel. They don't own me anymore. So didn't you have to wait? Like, wasn't there like a cool off period? There was a cool off period. And that's it. That's all I can say. Only one? Yeah. I did get approached by a MCN, which is like uh, the multi-channel network things. And it was Simon Cowell's multi-channel network. And I refused it. I decided not to go against it. But my friend Matt joined it. I think it was theirs. Allegedly it was theirs. They don't own my TikTok. I don't know if I, even I own my TikTok. That's a lizard queen. Yeah, that's a lizard queen, girl. Next assumption. Ironically, the judges have no talent. <laughs> well. 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 Is that an assumption or an opinion? Next, Next question. question. See ya. In my opinion, because I do think they do have talent. Is talent defined by Can you have a talent for accounting? Can you have a talent for judging? Can you have a talent by being a personality? This is what I would ask. Anyway. Next assumption. It might be hard for real talent to shine amidst all of the aspects of the experience. TV editing is, <laughs> look, editing can make anyone look like anything. I could, for example, film someone, put underlying music, cuts and other people's opinions and make someone look really terrible. I could literally sit there, say, I really like the way that I look because I've been pushed down that way of saying it. So a producer could have asked me, how do you look? I think I look okay. No, we think you look really great. Do you? Yeah, can you just say that on full camera? I think I look great. And then you edit it that with like, them walking in the room because they've been told to walk in the room like, then you put some like sassy music like Megan Trainer, Me Too. You walk out on stage and you do something really badly. Then everyone's going to hate that person. But they necessarily didn't think it's true. They've just been pushed down that pathway. That's just TV. That's the way they edit. They do it on Big Brother. You know, they must sit in the diary room and be like, oh, oh, I've had a really bad day. Sharon said I was this. And they don't tell you about the bad day. They just say Sharon said I was this. And then they cut it. Back to Sharon being like, oh, I'm really upset about what they said to me. Even editing myself. I know how much like you can change someone during an edit. 
I can make myself look like an idiot. You can, you can do whatever you want in an edit. And also when you have that power of someone above you, like a producer trying to convince you and like being on that personal level, of course you can like, you say things that you never said. The amount of times I had to stop myself being like, when I win Britain's Got Talent, I will be this. Because I was like, I'm not prepared to say that I'm winning. They were like, yeah, but how will you feel when you win? I don't think I'm gonna win. How do you feel like you're gonna wee? Be wee? <laughs> it's me in a cubicle, like. <laughs> you can even see if people watch like your first audition, you can even see you're stumbling. Because yeah. I'm so petrified the whole time that they're gonna like edit me. Cause I, I know that in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know that this can happen. And I'm like, oh my gosh, don't say anything. Like when I feel, <sighs> when I, and you can see me getting more annoyed. And then, then it built up this like fluster. Yeah, but it's not even that. You can tell that you don't feel like what you're saying. I felt really uncomfortable when I had to say told. things. Really uncomfortable. And watching other people around you be interviewed and knowing that just the way that things are spoken and you're like, and then they get their parents to go like this. And you're like, why are they getting them to look over the shoulder? Then you see the edit and it's like they hit the buzzer and then their parents look over the shoulder and you're like, oh my gosh, editing is great. And I think like I was very lucky to be edited in the way I was and I'm really grateful, like don't get me wrong, but I think that's when you just have to have a sixth sense about you and know like what they're doing with me in the edit. And you can't control that. That's completely out, out of your control. And that's that. Next assumption. Sob stories get people through to the finals well, you didn't have a well, I was in Heat magazine and they dug up a lot. Insert clip picture of me. They managed to get a lot of stuff out of me. And the thing is, is the media are scary. They rung up my school and they tried to get quotes. And one of my teachers rung me up and was like, can you, you be careful about what you say? Because we're having people ring up the school, like press ring up the school. And although school was a really supportive of what I wanted to do because I was like, dancing and doing all of that stuff at school. The like bullying side of things, they didn't really speak about. One teacher wasn't very good. As I was being verbally abused and spat on in French, not in French, like <laughs> And she, she looked at me like this. And I looked at her back and she did nothing. I just sat there like this. And it's one of those things, you know, when at night, when you're like, why didn't I just pick up the chair and slam it on his head? Obviously, I didn't say anything at school about that. You didn't say anything at all. Because I was terrified. You could have like spoken to me or spoken to- you know, Yeah, like- But you just didn't, you just dealt, you- were No, that's well. because I had an eating disorder at the time. But that's another video. <laughs> I just dealt with it, but it was very bad and I didn't say anything. So obviously when they rung up the school and they were like, no, we have a different experience of Philip. He followed his dreams. We were very supportive of that. But I didn't say that stuff until it, I was interviewed. And I didn't really have a sob story. My hamster hasn't died, so I'm not gonna talk about that. I don't need people to feel sorry for me in order to do what I love to do. Well, that got deep. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think people with sob stories do better? In my opinion, I think X Factor is very different from Britain's Got Talent. You have more airtime in X Factor to talk to the camera. You get you get more you get to know more about them. In Britain's Got Talent, it's kind of three things. First audition, when you find out, semi-finals. In X Factor, it's like first audition, judges' houses, boot camp, whatever it is. Next, interview every week at home. You get to know the person a lot more so you can find out more stuff about that. They know how to make telly. They go, oh, this is great. So people don't come with sob stories, but they go with it because they know how to make a storyline. They ebbs and flows. This is really great performance. Oh, I did it for this. And then up and then down. So you instantly feel that empathy for them. And then it's it's a character. It's, it's not, it's a TV show. You are playing a character. It's reality with a twist. See, I mean, the real housewives of Beverly Hills, they're not bloody all the time, like cutting each other's necks. Anyway, that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I need a wee. So I'm gonna leave you here looking at me in this end screen. Subscribe. <laughs> Make sure you click back and click that bell because who doesn't love bells? Ends. Oh my gosh, can you imagine living next door to a church? I did. Every Sunday, was it like, ding dong, ding dong. They always play the same tune as well. <laughs> Change it up, play the Nokia theme tune.
Anyway. That's it. <laughs> See ya.